Hello everyone, this is Fantasy Esque, and welcome back to The Sims 3 Roaring Heights. We are picking up with our adorable old whippet, Owl, because I feel as though we haven't been paying too much attention to our pets, and I definitely want to do that. He is, look at this, almost buried in the snow. This is how tiny he is, and this is how deep the snow is. And then when we put squid next to him, He's like, he's teeny weeny. He's just absolutely teeny. I think for squid, like when she's in the snow, then the snow only covers a little bit of a pause. So for a size comparison, that's kind of interesting. But I was so caught up with Henry and Norma and their kids that I kind of overlooked the pets for a bit. They were doing their own things in the background. And I thought to myself, hold on a second, Al is pretty old. How far along is he with his age? And then I saw that his bar was completely full, which means, you know, he could croak today for all I know, but I haven't received any notification that he has reached old age. I don't even know if you would get that for pets, to be honest. I know with the Elder Sims, when their bar is full, they could croak that day. They could croak 20 days from then, who knows, but usually two days before they die, you will get a notification from the game saying that their time uh, is about to end and the family should get their stuff in order. Usually two days from that notification, your sim dies. I don't think you get that with pets though. So I kind of freaked out. Now, one thing in the past that I was considering is whether or not I would have puppies with owl and squid. I definitely wanted to, but I wasn't sure if I would, mainly because Al and Squid just did not get along, uh, mainly because of this fussy whippet. He's really aggressive, and every time Squid tried to befriend him, he was not having it. So I thought, okay, we might not be able to breed them, but then they managed to become good friends autonomously, and um, when I saw his age, I was like, okay, let's uh, get a head start on this. So guys. I did end up breeding the two of them, so they are now mates, and Squid is currently expectant with puppies! So our beautiful Squid over here, um, she's got 10 days before she's an elder. This is probably the only litter that she will have, and I'm completely okay with that. But uh, yeah, I definitely wanted some puppies, so we did breed her. Now we just have to wait to see when she's going to have those puppies. But that's kind of my focus. Now depending on the amount of puppies she has, Especially because we don't have a ton of kids in this house. I'm kind of considering and you know, it is a huge huge home got a lot of money I'm considering that we might keep all of the puppies that they end up having Especially because I think it would be really nice for squid to have the company Especially once you know owl passes. I don't know when that's gonna be but I think it'd be quite sad if Al went and then she was all on her own and we gave her puppies away I know a lot of people prefer to keep one puppy and give the others around town. Again, I suppose that is something that we can do. Why don't you guys let me know what you normally do in your own games? Or, you know, what you think would be good for this situation? I'll have to see how I feel. I mean, we could go ahead and keep one puppy and then give the, you know, additional puppy to a close friend of Henry's. So, for example, right now among Henry's close friends, he has Clark Hoover, who is an elder, oh my goodness, Clark is an elder, but he could give that um, excess puppy to the Hoover family. And um, I don't know where the Hoovers live right now actually. I know across the street, see we could also give a puppy to the McGinnis family because they live across the street and that's really close, which means our, um, you know, our dogs could continue keeping a relationship with whichever pup gets sent out. So that probably would be nicer. The Hoovers live there across across town. Okay, so the Hoovers live across town and the McGinnis family live here. So, you know, we could um, prioritize Henry's friend or we could prioritize Norma's friend. I don't know, I'd have to think about it. And that's only if I decide not to keep all the puppies because I think it might be nice to just, you know, keep the family together. I mean, in the future, we could always change things if need be, but I think I would prefer just keeping the family with each other. But that is something that we are looking towards. Now, 
squid, where'd you go? Where'd you go, squid? She has been wanting to become best friends with Ernest, which I think is so adorable. If we look at her relationship panel, she has only ever managed to befriend Owl and Misty. She actually has not taken that much of a liking to anyone else in this house. For a while there, I thought she and Henry might become as close as Owl and Norma, but she hasn't had any wishes to progress that relationship. Although it does seem um, as though Ernest does autonomously interact with Squid quite a lot, and Squid has been having this want. So I think that is just too cute that it took Ernest for Squid to finally have someone in the family that she wants to develop a relationship with. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Speaking of Ernest, I don't know if it's because Ernest is family oriented guys, but I discovered something I did not know about before. I didn't know kids could have some of these wants, or not wants, but you know, interactions with toddlers that Ernest is displaying. So if we go to Jenny, we know when they were both toddlers, they didn't have a lot of interactions with each other. Um, and I'll probably have to wait till she wakes up, but I think there were three interactions that he could do with her. He could actually feed her and, was it, I think it was peekaboo, and there was one other thing he could do. I don't know if it was change her diaper or something like that. And I was mind blown. I did not even know kids could interact with toddlers in any way. Or in any meaningful way. Oh, look at this! That's so adorable! Oh my goodness. You two are too cute, and I didn't even do anything. Look at that, and he's going to feed Owl a treat. And he's doing this autonomously. I'm not even telling him to do anything. And the other thing, Ernest has been wanting so long to make friends and meet someone new, but I think it's been two days, and both of those days have been snow days, so he hasn't been able to go to school and meet anyone new, which kind of sucks. I know some of you guys, when you play, you like to turn off the snow day. Is that even an option? I think it is. You can turn off the snow day. Um, would that be in seasons? Do you turn off snow day, or do you get rid of winter? Um, maybe it's snow, like you get rid of the snow, and so even in winter, you can't have a snow day. Let me know how you guys uh, work around this, but I think that's how some people do it, because otherwise the snow days just go on and on and on and on, and then your sims just can't go to school. So yeah, I wonder if this is because his family oriented Ernest, and he considers the dogs his family, or he's just extra friendly. So he's going ahead and like giving them all treats. And this is something I don't really see the other Sims behaving like. Look at this, he keeps wanting to feed Squid treats. No wonder Squid is just really, really taken up with him. That is really cute though. Really, really cute. Okay, why don't you, once he's fed you a treat, try and do some interactions with him? Um, oh, look at this, this is too cute. We could play tug of war, that might be nice, and then play fetch and have some fun. I think that would be really cute. At least he's managing to make good friends. And you know what, it totally seems like an earnest thing to give Squid a bit more attention, especially if you know that she is expectant. Okay, okay Squiddy, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Nope, okay that's fine. Let's play tug of war, um, play fetch and have some fun. I feel like games and such does get your relationship up quite nicely. Okay, tug of war time. I saw these two playing beforehand and I thought it was just the cutest thing ever. I'm pretty sure it was something I lined up, but it was just so cute. Oh, look at this in the snow. And guys, do you see how like shallow the snow is for um, squid? It's It only takes up a little bit above her her paws, like her ankles, whereas with Owl, he's like half, half in the snow. Oh look at that! She was thinking about puppies! Oh wait, no! Can she not? No, isn't that tug of war? Is that not tug of war? Has the game just decided to freeze this interaction? Well that's a little bit uncomfortable. I might have to come back when these guys choose to unfreeze because right now they don't seem to be having a good time of it. Guys, now that we have Jenny up, 
I really wanted to show you guys the interactions that um, he has with her. Now, you guys can corroborate for me. Is this something all kids can do with toddlers or is it only family-oriented sims? So if I click on, and I haven't tried this before because I just, I'm lazy with my sims, so I don't make effort with certain, um, you know, gameplay interactions that come and I'm learning so many new things with this family. But with Ernest, if I click on Jenny, he can play peekaboo, hug, and feed on floor, which is so cute. And you have the uh, family-oriented icon next to it, so I'm wondering if that has something to do with it. But let's take a look at this. Oh my goodness, this is so cute. This is so cute. I'm pretty sure this is something like an interaction i have seen it somewhere i don't know if it's a sim trailer or someone else's lp like i've seen this but i have never attempted it in my own game and i just didn't it went over my head completely that it was an interaction and then i didn't even flip a no about the hug and feeding on floor but that is just too cute she doesn't need to be fed right now so i suppose he doesn't have to feed on floor but it's nice to know that it's there um, and it does mean that if we ever get into a situation now that Ernest is a child where Henry and Norma are caught outside the house and the baby is hungry for some reason, he can feed her. But I think she has to be out of the crib. Like if she is in the crib, I don't think he'll be able to pick her up and feed her on the floor. She has to already be wandering around here. But this is just too cute. Wait a second. Did that count as all my... Did that count as meeting someone new who did you meet that was new he had this want for a while to meet someone new he hasn't been able to go to school the only one he's interacted with is his sister so i'm wondering if this is maybe you know what maybe this is the first time he's really getting to know his sister or he's become friends with his sister so that's that's quite cute to be honest and since he is friendly and family oriented he probably uh, is going to be able to befriend everyone a lot quicker Oh, come on. Can you... Okay, stop playing peekaboo. You've been going for a while. Oh my goodness, they're good friends. Guys, I did not know that peekaboo could get your relationship up that quick. I don't think he's ever interacted with his sister, and just in the span of that one interaction, they managed to become good friends. Whoa, this thing is powerful. <gasps> oh, that's so cute. Oh my goodness. That is... That is so sweet. That is so cute. She stood up and everything. Oh, Okay, well, child. He, he wants to ask for a bedtime story. Actually, you can do something better than a bedtime story. Why don't you... It is really flippin' late. Why don't you go to the bathroom real quick and grab something to eat? You are hungry. Ooh, this key lime pie. Has the butler actually been cooking, guys? What? I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't know the... The butler would be bothered to cook. I get taken by surprise at times. But you do that, and then you can go to bed. Then you go to sleep. Then you go to sleep. There we go. There we go. I think that was a pretty nice day. No? I think so. Uh, we'll try and improve um, Squid and Ernest's relationship tomorrow, or at least I'll try my best. Hopefully it's not snow day and he has school. And oh my goodness, guys, the funniest thing. So you know how Al has been really nice to Squid this whole time. And, you know, initially he was aggressive, but he started becoming really friendly. And then I thought, oh my goodness, Al is getting up there in age. He might, you know, croak. So let's breed um, him and Squid so we can have some whip at cross field spaniel puppies. And as soon as they bred, like literally after they bred, he got this wish to growl at Squid. And then it said, the description says, dogs tend to growl when they sense danger or are in an uncomfortable situation. And I could not stop cracking up. Because we kept joking beforehand about how it would even work if Owl is so tiny and Squid is such a huge dog. Like, how does that even work? And, um, well, apparently we weren't the only ones who were feeling the discomfort because Owl... Yes, he and Squid have gotten closer, but uh, he felt very uncomfortable <laughs> by the situation that he found himself in, and he wanted to growl at Squid for maybe being a bit too rough. So there we go. I, that just full of and cracked me up, guys. That was so funny. That was so funny to me. So we definitely have to get him to complain to Squid at some point, but that was in relation to that, if you're wondering why. It was like as soon as they 
finished breeding or trying for puppies that came out that one and uh, what else um I think there was something on my mind but it's gone oh squid's just chilling down here with the music box okay I'll join you guys later you know guys there seems to be some sort of um, pattern with uh, Norma and births and public lots because Last time, Norma was trying to take Ernest on a stroller walk to the beach and she went into labor. This time around, Squid had the want to go to the pool, like take a walk to the pool, and Norma was the one who was going to take her because she's been feeling pretty stir-crazy. Um, and then the interaction got cut out, so I was like, hold on a second, what's happening? I went on to Squid and lo and behold, she's about to give birth to her puppies. So, I guess no walk? no walk and she's she's deciding that she wants to have her puppies upstairs i don't know how good of an idea this is because i don't remember if puppies can actually go up and down the stairs if that is the case oh, she, oh this is i don't know whether to find this cute or what i suppose some intrins, intrinsic part of her knows that this is like the baby area because the family's babies have been kept here and raised here so maybe she feels this is the place to have her own babies i suppose that is fine um you know for the longest time i was wondering what i was going to use this balcony for and i just realized well i could put the puppy stuff out on that balcony or i could put it inside i mean we do have a lot of space i'm sure i can um find some area in the hallway to turn into the puppy room or I could just use this room, which is where Henry has been putting all of his car miniatures for the automobiles he's worked on. I could make this into um, the puppy room as well. So I'll have to figure something out because I definitely want my little ones to be able to eat. But okay, I'm ready to see what sort of puppies she has. I'm excited also to see, you know, whether they're going to be small dogs or big dogs because we have one of each with the parents so i'm really curious about this okay guys here she goes and it's one puppy oh that'd be perfect just the one puppy <gasps> guys i think it's just one puppy wait what i only see one i only see the one puppy <gasps> Oh, that's just perfect, guys. That's adorable. Guys, that's just perfect. Because I was wondering what we're we going to do with excess puppies and how people normally like to keep one and give the other away. But we don't have to worry about it now because we only had the one puppy. Oh my goodness. Okay, it says parent one is Al, parent two is squid. And the body genetic says 70%. So I'm assuming this puppy is going to be a small dog like Owl. Um, because yeah, first parent genetic dominance. So the percent, it means basically that if it's um, above 50%, you, like the higher the percentage is, right? You take more after the dominant parent and the lower the percentage is, you take more after the second parent. So body is 70%, Al is the dominant parent, which means the baby's body is more like Al's. So I think that means the baby's going to be a small dog. Oh, that's so cute. Okay, this is puppy one, just the one puppy. That's just perfect. And it's a boy. <laughs> oh no, it's an aggressive boy like his father and his noisy like his mother. What a perfect combination of traits. We could have gone literally a noisy and maybe a shy dog or a loyal dog or an adventurous dog. No. Or like a playful dog, you know? Friendly. We could have gotten some nice traits. No, we got noisy and flippin' aggressive. Okay. Well, what are we going to name this little boy? I am going... Hold on a second. I need one of these guys to name him. We are going to name him... Goose. That's right, guys. So, <laughs> the child of Alan Squid is going to be Goose. Gusimovich. Oh, uh, what a cutie pie. Let's take a look at him. Let's take a look at him. Oh, he's so adorable. So he has, it seems as though, um, oh, blue eyes. Does his, fa does his father have blue eyes? Because the mother has brown eyes. This is fascinating. But yeah, he definitely takes a lot after his father. We'll have to see in terms of um, appearance as, you know, the puppy gets older. But I think even the coat, he's got 
I don't think do puppies have furry coats in The Sims 3? I think so. Like with the kittens, whenever there's two cats born, um, usually they look the same, like in terms of coat pattern, but one has fluffy coat and one doesn't. Okay. So this puppy, let's just do a quick breakdown of like what's happening here. We don't even do it with the, you know, human kids, but hey, it's probably the one puppy that we're gonna have, so I wanna pay attention to this. So like I said, body's gonna be like the father, the brows like the father, cheeks like the father, ears are gonna be like the mother, more like the mother at least. Okay, but then it says ears alt, like the father, so I'm actually not sure what combination that might be. Right now it looks like the ears very much like the father. Um, eyes, it says mother, but that could be like eye shape because color is definitely not the mother's. Head's more like the mother, jaw's more like the mother, legs are like the father. Okay, I feel like that goes in with the size of the dad as well. So snout would be the mother and nose. Okay, well we don't need a, you know, crazy breakdown. But definitely, just from traits and appearances, yeah, just the one puppy, this baby looks like dad all the way through. That is so cute. So I'm excited because this is a Whippet slash, well not slash, but you know, a Whippet cross Field Spaniel puppy. Where'd you go, bud? Where'd you go? Yeah, this is a Whippet cross Field Spaniel puppy. Why is everyone getting in the way? I'm just trying to look at my puppy. Oh, what a cutie pie. He might be stuck in this room though. So I'm gonna have to add in some puppy things. But yeah, the endless energy of a little baby. A little goose. A little cute little goose. He's got seven days till he ages up. He's gonna be the perfect companion for his mother. Oh, and now I'm also curious. I guess his friends. This is the interesting thing with the um, animals. When the animals are born, they're actually already friends with their parents. I don't know if they're also friends with their litter mates, but definitely with their parents. I think they're friends with their litter mates as well, actually. Um, that relationship can go down over time. But look at the size comparison between the puppy and the whippet. Like, look at the size comparison. That puppy is, like, not much smaller than the whippet. Now, this is something interesting, I feel, with... Um, like when you have small dogs breeding with bigger dogs and I mean in real life too it's actually better for this type of combination like if the if the female is bigger than the male it's easier for her to give birth because it, her body's already built for puppies of her size which means like you know her relative size puppies that are big dogs so if she breeds with a smaller dog her offspring are going to be either her size or smaller and the smaller they are, the easier it's going to be to give birth. Whereas if the female is a small dog and the male is a lot bigger, that can become very problematic, especially for the health of the female dog, because her body's built for small puppies. And if she breeds with a big dog, her puppies often will come out bigger. I mean, seriously, what are the chances, right? But even the small variation, you're going to have bigger puppies in a smaller body. She's not going to be able to pass them. And I feel like small females who breed with big males often have to get surgery done to get their puppies removed because they just can't naturally. And sometimes, you know, they could end up dying from that and the puppies could end up dying. So this is actually a better combination than um, the other way around. I'm also wondering if we're going to see more differences in Goose's coat as Goose gets older. But... For now, even like head shape and stuff, Goose doesn't look, if I'm looking at Goose, it looks like, like his snout isn't as pointy as his father's. And actually, where the hell did Goose get blue eyes from? Because neither parent has blue eyes. Now that is interesting. That must be a genetic mutation. What an exciting mutation to have. A little puppy has blue eyes. His father literally has brown eyes and so does his mother. That is crazy. That is wild. But it's exciting. They look very similar right now. But I'm wondering if we're going to see more differences as they, like, as he gets older with his coat pattern, maybe? For now, though, he looks very much like his father. I can't very much see many differences. But, oh, this is adorable. He's really hypo. 
He's really hypo, just running all over the place. Also, Ernest has been... Um, Ernest has been making friends at school. So he's met Louis Sorensen. Yeah, I'm trying to get him to meet new friends since it's something he's been wanting to do. So this is Louis. I don't think we know a Sorensen. Oh, we haven't really seen much of a Sorensen, interestingly enough. Huh. Huh. Okay, well that's curious. But I think, before I got sidetracked, what I was trying to say is that the animals, they are born with um, relationship with their family members. Whereas with the sims, like the human sims, when they're born, they have the babies have zero relationship with everyone, even the mother, and they have to build that up, which I think is interesting. I don't mind it. I know some people do. I don't mind it because I feel like it makes sense. If you had a child, but you gave it away for adoption, or you were negligent of that child, then you know it doesn't matter if you're the genetic parent, the child wouldn't exactly have a close relationship with you. Um, totally feels like something that has to be built over time, and so I get how in The Sims 3 you build that relationship by teaching them things, you know, um, or playing with them. That's how you really get your relationship with the offspring up. Huh, well, that was interesting. Well, Goose, why don't we find a place, I mean, we could even have some puppy stuff in this room, but I think I want to keep it over here. Why don't we go ahead and plop down some things for you. Now, the little ones, I don't think... They can't grab things out of the toy chest, but let's see. I kind of want to have a bowl like up here as well for the the puppy to play with. So I'm gonna put a bowl there. Um, you know what? Can we get? I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna get a fancy bowl. We're gonna get a fancy bowl for the little one. Do that. Um, it might be good to just bring like a toy from downstairs up. I might do that instead. Uh, oh, actually, I want to also put down a puppy bed. Nobody uses the one downstairs. Like, nobody does. But I'm pretty sure the mothers can huddle up with their puppies and it's really cute. So I'm actually going to put that bed right over there. So if um, Squid wants, she could sleep here with the puppy and it's really, really adorable. So, okay, we have that. I could actually... I might move this here, like that. Yeah, I think, uh, no, I'll just keep it the way it was. That's fine, that's fine. Okay, and I don't really have to do anything else. I don't know if the baby, can Can puppies play with this big? They cannot, but it's fine. At least the parents will be able to. They have one outside, but that's okay. Now, the other thing I wanted to do was actually grab a toy and uh, move it up. Although I feel like the maids are just going to take it back down. I w it would be nice if they could leave it up here. I might just have to get... You know what? I might just have to get a toy box for upstairs, I'm realizing. Because the maids just going to pack it away. They're going to pack it back. And that's not going to be too fun. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let's get a toy chest. Let's get a toy chest. Let's get a fun color toy chest. There we go. We'll just pop it there. So puppies can play around with that. That's fine. That is cool. Yes, I'm going to have to drag things out, but it's going to be so much easier than if I had to I'll just pop it there in the corner. But it'd be so much easier. Well, this is so much easier than if I had to um, I guess leave it there, right in the middle of the room. It's easier to pull stuff out of this box than if I had to go downstairs all the time. So okay, this is an um, impromptu puppy room. So the little one can, you know, chillax there, can eat there when he's done running around. But there we go guys, we have Goose, the newest member of our adorable, adorable family. Oh, he makes me so happy. Can the youngsters play with the... <gasps> oh, never mind. I thought the toddlers could interact with the puppies. They cannot. Can he? Um, okay, he can play. He can feed treats. Okay, that's fine. These are... It'd be nice to see him pick Goose up just for, like, size comparison. But that's fine. 
That's fine. Let little Goose run around the way he's running around. I want to, you know what? I want to get a... Are you going to turn around for us, buddy? I want to get a little look at Goose before we continue doing some other stuff. Just one more look at the adorable... Oh, jeez. Adorable Goose. Look at this, guys. Look at this puppy. Isn't that a cute puppy? That is an adorable, adorable puppy. Actually, I, I definitely feel like the body is a bit more filled out, like his, his mom, for sure. He's not as pointed as his father is. So, hmm, that's kind of cute. That's very cute. Okay, Goose, I'll leave you to your own devices, buddy. I'll leave you to your own devices. I know Squid just had Al's puppy, and you know, Al should be happy if anything, but he has a bone to pick with her from the time they were breeding. I think Squid was being a little bit rough, and he's been wanting to growl at her ever since, so he's gonna take this chance and take it out on her now that she's not expectant, and he doesn't have to be delicate with her. His, some of his aggressive tendencies are coming back. There we go. Just the one growl. Just the one growl, and they're gonna bury the hatchet just like that. Excellent. Excellent. And I'm keeping an eye on the lifetime points. I think there's some cool things they can get if we wait a little bit longer. Um, I don't think it's like you need the alpha pet or even super smart. What I want to try and save up for are these things. Like the super swank pet bed, the pet hygienator, and the bottomless pet bowl. I think those would be really cool. I don't know if the swank pet bed does anything special but especially the pet hygienator and like the bottomless pet bowl I think that would be really good stuff to have so fingers crossed he only needs 400 more points so if we could just get that before he passes that would be great I think that would be a life well lived in all honesty um, so okay we got that going now squid squid's been wanting to play with it says another pet, but really, it's got the image of Goose. She wants to give Goose some some time and energy. <gasps> oh, look at that! Goose is so tiny. Let's go goof around with um, our son. And then we're going to sniff. We're going to sniff Goose after we goof around with Goose. <laughs> That's such a... Uh, you can get tongue-tied with that name. Goof around with Goose. Hee <laughs> hee. But hey, it's cute. It's cute. I like their animal names. It's adorable. It's a thing. And you know what? I think because his father, Owl, has uh, an avian name. And he looks a lot like his father. But I mean, I suppose I already knew what he looked like. Yeah, we already knew what he looked like when I named him. So that, that was it. He looked like his father, so I was like, hey, why don't we go and uh, give him an avian name as well? Little Goose. Hey, 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 hey. Aren't you gonna goof around with your puppy? Do you not have enough, have enough space? You should have enough space. Oh, look at, look at how tiny he is. It's so tiny. There we go. Goof around. Oh, that's too cute. That is too cute. Goose has a huge attitude like his dad big attitude. Okay, that's cute. Go, go sniff him, though. Now go sniff him. Sniff your little puppy. Make sure your little puppy's all good. Look at him. He's so happy. Okay, he's developing some playfulness as well. Hopefully some good traits rub off on Goose. Where are you going? Where are you going? Your kid's out there. You're gonna jump on the bed. Really? How are you sniffing if you're jumping up on the bed? Come on, let's go back down. Let's sniff the little one. Come on, sniff the little one. You want to sniff Ernest too? Okay, we'll sniff everyone. We'll sniff everyone. She also has been wanting to go on a walk. Seriously, where is Goose? Goose. Mother dearest wants to sniff you. Well, then we'll track down Ernest. We'll sniff him too. We'll sniff Ernest too. Oh, we can lick him. Is it because we like him? We're not friends yet. We're not friends yet. But we're getting up there. Slowly but surely. Maybe if they play with each other a few more times, their relationship will be really good. Okay, let's snip seize the little one. Come on, come on. Let's snip seize Goose. Goose, stop running around. Goose feels like the, the typical naughty kid who just wants to be independent, run around and make a mess. 
<laughs> and Squid's the parent that fusses. Owl seems like the type of dad who's kind of just looking in the distance like, oh, okay, there goes my kid wrecking up a storm again. <laughs> and he's just like, that's my son. He'll be fine, left to his own devices. He doesn't need adult supervision. What? Okay, and you want to lick Henry. Look at this. This is cute. This is wholesome. Where's Henry? Henry, where'd you go? He's outside. Okay, Henry is too much effort right now. So why don't we um, be petted and be hugged and be brushed? Let's go and do that. Let's go and do that. I need to try and build this relationship a little bit at a time. A little bit at a time. Yes, yes, are we going to cooperate? Yes, we are going to cooperate. No, what is that face, Ernest? What face are you making? Okay, come on. Come on, kiddo. Give us some attention. Give us love. Please love us. Come on. Come on, Ernest. Stop staring at the dog. Come on. Do what the dog wants. What is that face? Why is he making that face? Do you guys see that? Okay, there we go. He he did give us a pet, which was nice of him. Is it because of the, he doesn't like the pictures of... Okay, he's doing fine now. There is something here he does not like. And I think... Is he a... Does he dislike art? He doesn't even dislike art. So I wonder what it is. And it says it's nicely decorated. Do you not like the pictures of your sister? What is going on, kid? I don't even know what's going on. Also, did we manage to get a picture of him in his room? I think we did. We did, we did. I don't know if I showed you guys this. I might have. But look, guys, we managed to get a picture of him in his room. There we go, in his outerwear. So we have um, a memory of him as a child. I'm trying to get something of everyone in each life stage. Have I gotten one for um, Jenny? We have ones where she is a, a baby. Do we have one of her as a toddler? Um, these are both Ernest. Guys, actually, I don't think we have one of Jenny. Okay, that is something I'm gonna have to work on. I think I was trying to off camera before, but she was just giving me a hard time, so I'll have to do that some other, some other point. But that's fine. That is fine. It's about to be midday on Thursday. Squid is finally getting the walk. She so desperately has been wanting to the pool by Ernest. Since it is Thursday, it's leisure day, so Ernest doesn't have school. Uh, and she's been wanting to go to the pool for a while. And I don't actually know if the walking helps get their relationship up. It would be nice if that was the case. I'm not seeing any sort of increase, and I don't know if there is maybe something towards the end. We'll have to see. I also don't know where this pool is. It's a waterfront pool somewhere. Why don't we check? This is really nice. They live close to the city, so even, I think, was it Norma? She got invited across the street, by the way, for Gil's party. Even when Norma goes ahead and, um, hold on a second, no, when she went, uh, was it her or Henry who had a stroller walk with one of the babies? Uh, I think it was, maybe it was Henry and Ernest, I don't remember. It might have been Henry, but he came down into the city, um, you know, streets, which was nice to see. But look at that, Squid might be a lot happier. Now where is this pool? Just out of curiosity, like where is the pool that they're going to? It is the waterfront pool. Don't tell me it's like all the way across town. I don't actually know. Oh my goodness, hold on a second. <gasps> Guys. Guys. Oh, hold on. Drama, drama, drama. So, 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 so. We had Gil invite... Wait, before that, we need to backtrack. So, earlier today in the morning, Donna called um, Norma. So Donna is Norma's best friend. She called Norma and she wanted to know if Norma was willing to come over to her place and spend the morning with her. I don't know what Norma said, but I think she agreed to go over to Norma's place. 
I don't remember where the heck Norma lives right now, but I think it is not that close. Um, I think she lives on the other side of town. Um, so there was that. And then Donna must have, if she did go, I wasn't keeping track of her, she must have come back home because then she had this afternoon party at Gil's place. Now, you can kind of see on the right side, she has already crossed the street and is going to Gil's house. So as soon as she left, Donna called up her best friend's husband and asked him out on a date. Now the question is, Henry, who has been a family sin this whole time, is he going to go? You know what guys, just for drama's sake, I think he is. I don't know if he's going to do anything there or if anything's going to happen between them, but he's going to say yes. He's going to say yes. I mean, he and Norma have been going strong this whole time, but she's going to say yes. So I'm really curious to see what's happening. But the pool that I was looking at, I think, oh my goodness, it is here. It is like across town, across the bridge, all the way on this strip. Honestly, by the time he gets there, Ernest is going to be too tired. I think there's another pool that's actually a lot closer. Oh my goodness, yeah. They could have gone to this pool over here, the Riverside pool, but I suppose when the list came up, I didn't know what was where. It's okay. This can be like their walk across town. They're gonna come back home soon, but that can be their walk across town, and it's fine. At least they'll, you know, be able to go through over here. Just spend the day walking with each other. That's okay. They might have to cancel at some point. But where the heck has Donna invited Henry? That's what I'm curious about. This feels so suspicious. <laughs> he literally is leaving the house as soon as Norma has crossed the street. Henry, I wasn't expecting this from you, Henry. But to be fair, I was not expecting this from Donna of all people. I don't even think Donna knows Henry that well. Um, is this? No, that's Janet. This is Donna. She's an elder now. Donna, you need to stop looking at other people's spouses. But hey. I don't know how her relationship with her own husband is going. Who is she married to? I'm sure her husband is somewhere on this list. Uh, that is not her husband. We did know her husband a long time ago, but I suppose we've just fallen out of touch. She's become strangers to us. Actually, now I'm wondering if they even are together. Not that it's important. I was actually going to get Henry to spend some time teaching Jenny some skills like potty training and maybe walking. But no, now he's uh, walking off somewhere else. So I'm curious, where the heck has Donna invited him? Like, where is he going? I want to know, where is he driving off to? This is making me curious. The other thing, guys, I learned recently that the, like, fixing up a car um, that we have in the garage, that actually comes with the Roaring Heights. I did not know that, but it makes so much sense. It makes so much more sense. That's, that's actually part of Roaring Heights, it comes with the world. Being able to build up or, you know, spend time working on your own car. And then apparently when it's done, it costs a hundred thousand simoleons or something like that. Okay, another set of spouses, the nests, have declared each other enemies. This is, I think, the second, the second um, pair of spouses that have done that. Okay, where is this? Where are we? What? This is so scary. Donna invited Henry out on a date to the freaking military base? You're kidding me. And they live over here, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure they live over here. But of all the places, she invited him out to the military base? Well, what if this isn't, like, what if this isn't a date in the way that we think it is? What if, and he's really tired too, what if Don, and I don't even know where she works. What's her occupation? I'm not actually sure. I don't know. But what if she works for the military, or in the military, and Henry, being a level 10 businessman, has some lucrative information on something, or maybe the military wants his assistance, maybe they want him to fund some project, secret project of theirs, or, you know, he might have some intel that they want to extract from him. So he's actually been under the guise of date. He's been summoned to the military base for questioning. I don't know. So she's over here, Donna. Who's calling her? Is that her husband? Someone's calling her. She didn't pick up the phone and she was really upset by it. And then she had a negative reaction 
messaging them. And now she's texting all these other people. So that makes me really curious. Like, what is even happening here? What is happening? Okay, well, we are here. She's not interacting with us, though. I don't want to force them to interact. Oh, Henry came and he went home. They didn't even interact with each other. Okay, I wonder what that was about. I wonder what that was about. Oh my goodness, because not, not, nothing happened. She didn't even do anything. She did not even do anything. Guys, what do you think this was about? I'm so curious. Why would Donna call Henry out without Norma knowing? And then not talk to him at the military base and send him back? Huh. This is a mystery. We're gonna have to think about this, guys. This is quite the mystery, but on that note, I'm going to leave off here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.